What would be more exhausting to you? Doing the work and seeing change, not doing the work and not seeing change. You pick one because you can't get both. What is up, my fellow dreamers and soul searchers? Welcome to the Roxy Talks Manifestation Podcast, your raw, unfiltered, and unapologetic source for all things manifestation related. I'm Roxy Lee, and for the last decade, I have been researching and developing my signature 360 method, which combines behavioral science, quantum physics, and the law of attraction to help you manifest a life beyond your wildest dreams. Visit RoxyTalks.com for more info. Now, let's get into it. Sometimes thoughts of my SP with other women come to me and I don't react. I just ask myself, does this thought work for me? Nah. And change to positive. Oh, should I do something else? No, I think that's great. I mean, the only thing I would say is, um, you know, you can expand upon it, but like you're, you're right. It does it work for you. No. And is it a real thing? No, it's just like, it's just like, okay, think about it. Like, okay. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay. Here I'm thinking, this is something I've never said before in this way. So infinite, let's say infinite versions of reality, near infinite versions. So many that it's, it's, it might as well be infinite to us because it's gotta be like every option that could ever exist for every person and probably more, right? Okay. So anything that we could ever fathom times plus way more, everything is already in, in existence. All these realities are viable right now. They're all, I don't want to say happening because it's almost like a, like it's a frozen snapshot, almost like each mill, like barely millisecond of time is like all these snapshots of realities lined up. So all these potential versions of, of reality are, are out there in existence somehow. And we're just like, you know, going to them. Okay, here we go. When you get when you get like a thought of something. So let's say that you, like you said, I had a thought of a of my my person with another person. What if that thought was just a piece, a remnant, a glimpse, a thought, a whisper, um, an aftershock, a ripple? What, what is it? Um, I am I am what is it? I am legend? Not I am legend. I am robot. Um, the ghost in the machine. That kind of thing of just a reality, the reality where that's happening, but it's not necessarily your reality, right? It's like, kind of like how in dreams we do, we go to all kinds of crazy places. It's, you know, a dream is a dream and you're not really worried about what happens in your dreams because it's your dreams, but like your thoughts are the same thing. It's all potentiality. And when a thought comes your way, just think of it as like a snippet of code or a remnant, or even like a teaser, a trailer. Oh, I like that trailer for a different reality that you could jump to, but you don't have to. You don't have to look at that trailer and say, I want to watch that movie. You can look at that trailer and say, uh, no fucking thank you, not for me. And that's what you're doing. So, um, so yeah, just like, I like the, I, that's just what came through was like, there's all these re different realities just because a thought comes through doesn't mean it's your reality. It just means, Hey, that's out there. Would you, you know, it's, it, it's like an ad, like a pop-up window. It's like a pop-up for that reality. It's almost like, Hey, you want to come over here? Come on down to 103.5 belief.com and you can live this reality where your person is cheating on you with other people. And some of us are really like hypnotized by that, the sound of that station, I guess. Pastor Dave says, uh, self permission is a necessary habit we lose by letting others take our power in needing to relearn to take it back. Yes, absolutely. Just letting, like thinking that others' opinions or approval or anything like has any bearing over what you actually do or decide or allow yourself to think about yourself and your world. I get it if up until now people have shown you that you can't count on them. But if you keep saying that you can't count on them, they will keep showing you that you can't count on them. You know, at some point you have to look at people not not showing up for you and being pieces of shit to you and look at it and say, wow, I really have great people in my life who show up for me and support me. No matter what they're doing, if you want it to change, you are the change that needs to be made, not them. Stop looking at them to change your reflection. It's you that's making them do that. You are making them do that with your incessant need to have this story continue about how you've been victimized in whatever way. 
change the sentences and you change the world. And then eventually the feelings come along too. The feelings are a byproduct of the sentences you say. And that's why you feel like shit all the time because you keep saying shitty sentences all day long. And then I come on here and I affirm it over and over and I just keep seeing it every week. So again, I'm so glad that everybody understands how important and powerful their words are. And they understand it so much more that they understand that their words are almost more important than the way they actually feel because it's okay to let yourself feel the way you feel and love yourself through it and still think that things are going to work out for you no matter how you feel right now. It is possible because I make myself do it every day, all day, every day. And I've been doing it for the last two and a half years. And again, I told you in the beginning, I didn't start out as a positive thinker. I didn't even know what positive and negative thinking meant. I had no clue what that concept even was when people would talk about being negative. I'm like, what the fuck does that even mean? And I was negative. I was one of those people. Because I am a little, 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 conscious, you know, constant stream of consciousness person. And my thoughts were not, I wasn't trained to think in an uplifting way. And so I said and, and thought a lot of things that were not pleasant or positive. And again, I had to train myself to not say those things all day long, day in, day out, not react the same way, not tell the same story. Like if I can do it, you can do it. It takes awareness and discipline. I say it every time. It's the cornerstone of my practice, awareness and discipline. you got to know what you're saying and what you're doing, and you got to be able to do something about it every time. If you can do those two things, you are the master of your entire world. I want to read your tech, your, your question, because your question has a lot of like drama and desperation. Like you, your little, just this one little blurb is like a desperate housewives episode. Okay. I'm going to read it as a dramatic. What is it when you read a script? I've never, I've never even like really auditioned for anything. A monologue. A monologue about mental diet. Mental diet is ever worse than food diet. Discipline, ah! But how, how can you not react when you see him posting on Instagram but not replying to your text? How? And see, okay. So, <clears throat> how is you know when you look in, you open your phone and you see a post that you care zero about? Like, if I opened my um, Instagram up and I saw, like, a power drill, I would have, like, the, the most zero reaction emotional response to it. You train yourself to pretend that it's not that big of a deal because if you open your phone and go on this dramatic monologue, you're not going to change your world. And it's, I'm not saying that your experience isn't valid and it, it doesn't suck or whatever, but like, what's the point of being so dramatic about something you've already manifested unless you want to manifest it again? So if your mental diet's worse than ever, the first thing would be to say is my mental diet's on point. I'm doing really well. I'm keeping my thoughts on track because if you just affirm that your mental diet is shit and then talk about how shitty it is, what so and? What are you doing about it? There, there's no solution there. You know, you need to like figure out how to control your language. Like if somebody isn't texting you, then that's a you problem, not them. Why do they need to perform to fulfill your internal shit? That's not about them. It's about you. You need to understand that they are a reflection of you. And if they aren't responding to your text, it's probably because you're acting so, how do I say this? You're acting like you're so convinced that this person is doing you wrong. You're so convinced that he can't do this and he's doing blah, 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 blah. That's why, because you are telling that story. And every time you open your phone, you're not mastering your awareness and your discipline and you're letting yourself react all over the fucking place and squirting it all over who anybody who's in the way. Okay. That's not okay to do to people. So you need to be able to look at your phone and say, mm, okay, interesting. Good thing. I'm the source of my own happiness. Good thing. I make myself happy. Good thing. I'm fully and completely fulfilled in my world. And 
even if that's not the truth, you need to practice saying that so you can get out of the practice of letting it ruin your life every time you open your phone. Because what that's doing is just setting you up for shitty things to be in your phone, which means you're manifesting him to you're manifesting him to respond to them so it can validate the fact that you are getting the raw end of the deal, which you cannot stop telling every single day. Hey friends, it's Roxy here popping through with a really big announcement. I am no longer going to be offering one-on-one coaching starting August 1st. So that means if you want to get signed up to talk to me one-on-one, you've got until July 31st to do so. RoxyTalks.com backslash coaching will get you there right away. And please stay tuned. I have such amazing stuff coming. I'm so excited and I can't wait to bring you along for the new chapter of Roxy Talks. My self-concept is on point, but I love that. That's my favorite. Anytime anyone's like, anytime we take the, start taking the train to butt town, I'm like, okay, well, there's your answer. Whatever you say after butt is the problem. Well, let's read it. Let's continue before I make my assumption. Okay. My, my self-concept is on point, but 3D is in lag with a specific person and has, has been since our rafting trip in September. Now a month of no contact. What the fuck is happening? Affirms and scripts daily. Um, I'm going to tell you that your self-concept is not on point because you think you have a relationship with someone who hasn't contacted you in months. You think your reality is equivalent to what the fuck is happening. You think your reality is equivalent to I'm affirming and scripting daily and it's not working. You think your reality is equivalent to SP, something happened on our trip. I'm in a time lag. I'm again, I'm doing it. It's not working. Yada, yada, yada. Your self-concept is not on point because that is all part of yourself. And actually, I'm glad you're saying this because this is unlocking something for me, you know. Oh, here we go. Okay, so a lot of the mm, the content, the material and shit and, and just language, what am I saying? Language and um, like the idea and notion of self-concept, I think, oh, how am I saying this? It's like it stemmed off of the idea of like self-love. Remember everything was like, oh, it's self-love. You got to do self-love. And then it was like, oh, it's self-concept, right? The self-concept came from the idea of self-love. And then the idea of self-love, remember like when it was like, we all just were like, what is self-love? It's such a vague, like, like generic box top word. It's like, it's like, I'm seeing like a, a can of like a, a can with a white label and just like corn written in black, you know, it's like super generic, like self, self, love, self, self care, self focus, whatever, um, or self concept. Right. So we're getting these ideas off of what we think self care is, which is like bubble baths and massages with self love and, Oh, I don't know. Yeah, girl, be yourself. Woohoo. Yes. Yes. You can do it. Yes, girl. Yes. Self concept must be then, Oh, I'm a bad bitch. I can do anything. Yada, yada, yada. That's what we're thinking. Right. And, and sorry, if you're not, if you're not of the persuasion to think of yourself as a bad bitch, but you get what I'm saying, right? Um, we have this idea that self-concept is this like, yas, yas, I can do it. Yas, I'm a badass. Like, But really your self-concept is the self, which is you as a whole and your ability to manifest and create life for you. Your self-concept is more than just thinking you're a badass bitch that deserves better because your self-concept is telling you that you are in a reality where you have not spoken to your person for months. Do you get what I'm saying? It goes deeper than the surface level shit. It goes deeper than the the first deeper level, right? It's even deeper than that. So, you know, uh, I would say that it's not just that you're, maybe your self-concept in some areas is good, but you don't understand that you're creating everything with your sentences and all of your sentences need to be on board and you need to stop describing your life as this. People... People love to label that I'm in no contact. Why would you say that? Why would you label it that? Why would you look up all these videos and I'm in no contact, I'm an NC, I'm this, we're no contact, we've been spoken for months. Shut the fuck up about it if you don't like it. And I mean that with love. Like, if they're not contacting you, probably because you say it 50 fucking times a day, how are they supposed to break through that barrier? And they're your reflection. How can they contact you when you say all day long you're in no contact do you understand what no contact means and then you're like they're not contacting me well maybe you should take the fucking label of no contact off the table sorry (laughs) sorry Sorry for yelling (laughs) 
Roxy, I was doing well on the 360 method, but now I feel like my I can't control my thoughts anymore. Whenever I flip the thought, the thought comes back. I get flipping and I end up exhausted. Okay, so let me ask you a question. First, I want to ask a few questions for you. One. Ooh, I'm going to go on on a limb here. I'm going to make an assumption about your pattern. And I'm going to go out here and make an assumption. And I'm going to say that I think that your pattern is to give up when it gets hard. So that's part of it. Part of it is that every single practice that you do is, is going to adapt. Think about, think about like a football player. You think they do the same sprints and exercises and weight training and everything every single day? No, they're doing fucking ballet. They're doing yoga. They're doing weightlifting. They're doing running. They're doing, I don't even know what they're doing saunas and getting massages and stuff like that. They're doing all kinds of stuff to keep themselves well-rounded physically and mentally so they can perform at their highest. If you're doing it and now it's hard, why would you give up? If you, if you actually want to succeed at it, why would you give up when it gets hard? You're, that's when you push through more. If you're, if you're come to a day where you, it's hard to flip, then I have news for you. If you weren't flipping that day, you'd be drowning in your fucking uh, spiral. If you come upon a day, if you're doing 360 and you come upon, a, come upon a day where you're flipping and flipping and flipping and flipping and flipping and it's exhausting, I'm telling you right now that if you hadn't been flipping that day, you would have been wallowing all day in your, in your pattern. You would have been down in the dumps and letting yourself think shitty thoughts all day. Now, my next question for you then is what is more exhausting to you, Bruja? Is it more exhausting for you to answer back to your thoughts and not let them have the last word? Or is it more exhausting for you to sit in your pool of shame and misery and pain and just let everything continue and not do anything about your life and not change it? What is more exhausting to you? Doing the work or actually making change? Not making, you get it, right? What would be, let me try that again. What would be more exhausting to you? Doing the work and seeing change, not doing the work and not seeing change. You pick one because you can't get both. Has your personality changed as you're more cautious of what you say? Um, yeah, I think so. I would say overall, my personality has changed in ways that personality, um, you know, I'm no longer willing to talk about downfall. I'm no longer willing to talk about what sucks and what's not working. You know, like there's, there's a time and place for it sometimes when you're working on strategy, when you need to, you know, vent, when you need to get things out and you're, you know, working on solution, but it's like, I save it for those moments and then I'm not fucking spraying it all over people. I don't fucking bitch to people about what I don't like. I don't talk about what I don't like. I don't, I don't look at my shortcomings. I don't focus on that. I've learned to turn every instance where I would have maybe normally criticized myself or thought something low vibrational or low quality and turn it into something that's better because I get the fact that my fucking words are making my, my world work. You know, my worth and value is something I work on every day. And that's a byproduct of doing all this work, but my language changed way before my worth and value changed. And that's what, one thing I wish. Okay. You know, actually I'm really glad I said it like that. Everybody out there who's it's not working for you. It works for everybody else. They have it and you don't. I've been doing it for this long and it's not working. These people say this and they don't support me and everybody does this to me and it doesn't work like this and blah, blah, blah. If that's your story, I want you to know right now that I had to change my words long before my self-concept showed up and believed it. Do you get what I'm saying? I didn't believe it when I started saying it, but I didn't care and nothing could stop me. And that's why it worked. And I'm still doing that. And I still do it every single day. And to me, there's nothing more important in the entire world than controlling the things you think and say, because everything else comes from it. There, there could not be, it'd be like, it'd be like if you want chocolate chip cookies really fucking bad, but you refuse to put chocolate chips in your cookies. Well, guess what? You're never going to have them. You will never have chocolate chip cookies if you refuse to put chocolate chips in your recipe. How could you? How could you? And similarly, if you don't like peanut butter cookies. You will never not have peanut butter cookies if you don't stop opening that jar of peanut butter every single chance you get to harp on the peanut butter and putting it back into your recipe. I have a homework for you guys that just popped up something. I want to do hyper, hyper awareness. I want everybody to do first start with 24 hours of hyper awareness, and then we're going to extend it, try to get to a week. But I want everybody to leave here hyper. I know we talked about it last time about, you know, combing your thoughts, choosing them wisely, thought by thought. But like, I want you to be, I'm, I want you to be less focused on choosing the right thoughts and more to, and more focused on paying attention to how many times a day 
you describe it as not working, taking long, other people's bullshit, wham, 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 this, me, this, it's not working, I'm sad, da, 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 da. How many times a day are you doing that and how long? For how long? How many thoughts can you fit in? Like, okay, think about this. If you were thinking negatively for five minutes, how many thoughts do you think you could squeeze into five minutes about your, your reality? Probably a lot, a lot. And then because you spent those five minutes thinking those thoughts, you are now influenced by them. You've influenced your own self. You're influencing your own thinking by allowing yourself to think this. And now you're going to go and live the next moments of your life as if those five minutes are true. Tiffany says, it's so incredible, empowering, and liberating when you want something that literally does not exist in your current reality. And just by changing your thoughts about it, you call it into your life. And I, yes, I love it. I, you're so right. I wanted to end that on you or end, <laughs> end, end this on that because that's how I created Roxy Talks. I didn't, it didn't exist when I made it. I affirmed, I affirmed my business into existence before I knew what it was going to be. Okay. So if I can do it, you can do it. I've told you guys before, my, my, I, my soul's in alignment with my highest calling. That's what started it for me, you know? So I'm in alignment with my soul's highest calling, whatever. That's just like, um, the work I do is in alignment with my soul's highest calling. That's the, the concept I was telling myself over and over and over before I had a business. And that's what led me to starting a business. Roxy Talks did not exist. I made this out of nothing. I made this out of thin air. Okay. So you can too. Um, if you need help, roxytalks.com, lots of different ways to get you the information that will help guide you there. And if you want to speak to me one-on-one -on -one to help your specific situation, you can grab one-on-one -on -one coaching at my website as well. I love you all. I appreciate you. I'll see you next week. Give yourself 24 hours of hyper attention and awareness and make sure that you are paying attention to how and when and why your brain tries to lead you astray from your ideal reality. Okay. Mm -hmm.